In the summer of 1994, a small town in Virginia called Arcane Heights held the record for the most missing person cases within the span of just two months. Between May 30th and August 12th, over 124 missing persons were filed with ages ranging from 2 to 98 years old. This event was known as the Arcane Heights Anomaly and was made even more disturbing by the fact that during this entire event, not one piece of evidence was discovered, nor any bones or remains or even footprints. Some people speculated that it was the work of some underground cult or Satanist organization. Others believed that it was merely a hoax and that the police officers just needed something to keep them busy due to there being little to no criminal activity before this debacle took place. On October 31, 1996, two years after the incident at 12 o'clock a.m., police received numerous complaints from Mary Meadows residents about gunshots coming from the house of Morton Thomas. When arriving at the scene, police were met with the horrific sight of Morton Thomas's dead body, along with his wife Margaret, his mother Joanne, and his four children, bound and gagged in a circle around him, all of whom were executed via gunshot to the head. The most disturbing thing about the crime scene was the fact that all of the victims had their eyes sewn open and their tongues cut out. Further investigation led the police officers to the attic, where they were met with a more sickening sight. For shoeboxes full of Polaroid pictures of Morton, performing acts on humans far too horrifying to be described. Five jars containing nothing but human teeth several bags of clothes, Ziploc bags full of human hair, and several other things that the authorities chose not to disclose along with the photographs. Police discovered a note written by Morton Thomas himself confessing to the murders. The following words you are about to read contain content that may be disturbing for some readers, if you do not have the stomach for that kind of stuff, please exit out of the story now. Reader's discretion is strongly advised. Dear officers or whoever finds this note, by the time you are reading this, I am probably lying dead surrounded by a pool of my old blood and the corpses of my entire family. Unless, of course, I hesitated. In which case I am currently on the run somewhere you'll never find me. I honestly hope that I decided to go through with it. I couldn't bear to live with the thought of my actions anymore. The disease in my mind has muted my suspension of disbelief. It made me see things that didn't exist. Hear things that were never spoken. Made me do things that I thought were good but were actually atrocities far too malicious for the human eye to witness. No medication seemed to slow it down. No pill nor experimental therapy. All it seemed to do was keep me in the dark, about what is truly lurking in the dark. Keep me from figuring out who I truly am and the things that I am destined to do. I am not a man. As you may have been led to believe, I am a god of chaos. I am the one true savior of the world, sent by Jehovah himself to stop the world from the unforgiving hand of my younger brother, the Antichrist. But in order to prove my divine power, I had to showcase it in a way too gruesome for the human mind to comprehend. Only once I am dead and dragged down to hell, will my full form finally be revealed, and once I am finally reunited with my celestial body, I will forever be allowed to live in the shadows until the day of the rapture comes. That day I cannot tell you, but I can tell you that it will be soon. It will bring mass chaos, 
disease, famine. Plagues so disgusting that your feeble minds would shrink from the mere thought of them. I know what you're thinking now. What does this nonsensical rambling have to do with the anomaly? Well, that part is tricky to explain, so please allow me to elaborate. The evidence you see before you are the final remains of the 120 for victims 130. Counting my family of what you call the Arcane Heights anomaly, the infamous time where people were disappearing, left and right, and everybody was living in fear knowing that they could be next. But actually, I never choose just anybody for the rituals. I only chose those that my disease deemed pure of heart, people that could do no wrong, cause no pain, people that were unable to be hated because they were just that pure. These are the people that made the rapture possible. I had to kill them in order to save them from the rapture. No beams of light are gonna come from the sky. That is stuff of fiction. I had to make them suffer before they went to heaven, so that the holiness of God would heal their wounds and make them into angels. That would help me fight against my cowardly brother. I know it won't make sense now, but trust me when I say that once the apocalypse happens, you will see what I mean. I know what trouble I might have caused, and I'd like to apologize to all the families and friends who I have taken people from. I'm sorry for taking them out of their homes and making them helpers in the quest for my body. I'm sorry for not stopping when they begged me to, and for cutting up their tongues when they got to loud. I'm sorry for all the devious acts that I performed on them. The experiments I put them through to see just how pure of heart they really were. And all of the heartbreak and confusion caused by this silly little misunderstanding. I hope you guys will understand once the plagues start. And then you will look back on this day and realize all of the things that this did for us. When me and my army of angels come down from the sky with our bow and arrows of light and send my brother and his hordes back to the fiery depths. You will learn to thank me for this. I am not a bad man, just a god that is misunderstood by humans and mankind. And once this letter is released to the public, there will be people in the crowds who agree with what I did, and will praise my name along with the other gods, both new and old. Do not be sad that these people are dead. Be glad that you are now part of something far greater than you could ever imagine. And no matter how crazy you think this is or how much it doesn't make sense, one thing's for sure. You will never understand how important this was to us. Until you are staring death directly in the eyes, I have to go now, friends. Jehovah is waiting for me. I will see you at the end of days. Sincerely. Morton Thomas, P.S. It was worth the guilt.